Hello, Veteran0121 here. Welcome back, and we are Let's Playing Final Fantasy IX. And in the last episode, we did some screwing around, and in this episode, I came to the conclusion that if I don't get this fight out of the way, I might not ever do it. And, uh, it's that big of a pain in the ass. I mean, I've been dreading this fight the entire Let's Play. Um, yeah, I just want to get done with it, man. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, yeah, if we come over here and examine this question mark area. What's this? Looks like an Eidolon cave. Wait, Koopo! I feel strange presence inside, Koopo. Is it bad? I've never felt anything like it, Koopo. It's not of this world, but not like a ghost either. It feels otherworldly, Koopo. Uh, let's examine it. But anyways, at this point right here, I don't think you should, Koopo. Yes, he's warning us for the last time and we have an opportunity to select party members now I don't have Zidane in my party for this I actually took him out of my party if you're wondering how to do this well I've already shown you in the previous episode with um, putting Beatrix in my party but um yeah this is the party I'm gonna go with for Ozma, Vivi, Rusty, Freya, and Amaranth and these are gonna be my equipment setups I'm going to have the pumice piece equipped, that way Vivi can absorb holy and shadow elemental damage. And I have the demon's mail equipped on Rusty so he can uh, so he can absorb shadow as well. And then I have the ribbon on there for holy damage reduction. Same with Freya, basically the same exact setup. And uh, for Amaranth, I have a pumice piece on him as well. And basically, a build. Well, I'll show you the abilities I'm going to be using when I get there. But yeah, for this part, I got. To, oh shit! You know, I don't have. Damn it! I don't have auto life learn with Rusty yet. God damn, man! I don't. Yeah, I don't. I'm not going to need alert. I'm not going to need all this other crap. Uh, you know what? Screw it. I'm not even going to worry about auto life. Rusty, but I am going to equip MP Attack and Bird Killer in case he gets berserked, and I can't unberserk him because uh, Ozma is a flying enemy, and then I can use MP Attack to bo further boost the power of the physical damage because, uh, well, obviously that would be a good thing. But yeah, basically with Rusty, I'm going to be using Shock, and then with Freya, I'm going to be using um, Dragon's Crest because it's powered up all the way to max damage. And then with Vivi and Amaranth, yeah, I want auto life. And with Vivi and Amaranth, I have Return Magic. And then yeah, I have Bird Killer and MP Attack on Amaranth as well, along with Return Magic, because that's going to be useful in case Ozma uses Doomsday. Because the whole point of you of doing the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, friendly monster side quest was so that Ozma would actually be vulnerable to shadow elemental attacks because if he uses Doomsday and you haven't done that side quest all Doomsday will do is heal him which is obviously bad so um yeah let me go with bird killer I guess in case Freya also gets uh gets uh gets screwed up and um yeah, I'll put MP attack on her as well. So yeah, that's going to be my setups for the next battle. I do have status ailment protection in case the boss uses curse, although I don't really think it matters, to be quite honest with you. Because if he uses curse, then you're pretty much screwed. Yeah, curse is an ability that Ozma uses that completely rapes your party, puts like a ton of status ailments on your party, like many... Uh, blind, a whole bunch of crap, and then it does damage on top of it, so it's like bad breath on steroids. It's incredibly cheap. So if he does that attack once, you're basically fucked, and you're gonna lose. So, largely this fight is based on luck. So I'm gonna leave it at that. Uh, let's see, what, can I, what else can I give to Rusty here? Um... Accuracy, I guess. I don't know. I don't know how Asma's evade is. But, um... <clears throat> um... Yeah, I really have nothing else to add. I think I've pretty much went over everything, and that's... 
what it's gonna be like. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Damn. Yeah, maybe I could use some extra HP with Rusty. Just in case. Got the cat jumping up in the chair trying to fucking attack me and shit, but yeah, I'll be right back. Oh yeah, and the reason why I don't have Zidane in my party is because I don't have Thievery powered up that high, so I figured Freya would be a better option because I do have Dragon's Crest powered up, you know, fighting the Grand Dragons, so let's do it. I'm probably going to lose. But yeah, this is Ozma. He has about 55,000 HP, which actually doesn't really sound like that much, but it is considering the fact that he has really high magic defense and physical defense. And, uh, yeah, the spiritual power raised the attack range. Hopefully this guy starts out with Doomsday, which he doesn't, and this is probably going to fucking wipe us all out. This guy is a fucking cheap ass. See, that's, that's not even fair. That's just not even fair at all. How are you supposed to... What are you supposed to do when he does curse? So yeah, that's what Ozma can do to you. He can completely fucking annihilate your ass. It's not even fair. Alright, here we go. And yeah, right here I'm actually manipulating the random number generator. And... We are ready to take on Ozma. And this is a rare, very rare case where I'm actually doing post post gameplay commentary because this boss is so friggin' cheap that um yeah it's I just had to do it that way so basically this is Ozma he has about 55,000 HP yeah he, uh, he's a cheap ass and he starts out the battle with Doomsday which definitely helps my cause get out of here kitty get out and uh, yeah basically what's gonna happen here is it's gonna heal my party but it's gonna hurt him for max damage and then BB is gonna follow that up with return magic he's gonna do basically the same freaking thing and uh, Amarant's also gonna do the same thing not for quite as much damage though because his magic power isn't as high as uh, as other characters like Vivi, you know, who's actually a black mage, but it still deals pretty good damage, and uh, yeah, it's the best way, in my opinion, of taking out Ozma is Return Magic. And I'm sure there's other ways to take him out in low level runs that are probably just as good. In fact, I actually did hear about the, uh, the charge ability that Rusty has. Uh, if your characters are in critical status, and use the charge ability, then your characters can do good damage with physical attacks. However, uh, I tried that off screen and I noticed the damage really wasn't that good because my weapons weren't really that good. So I kind of scrapped that idea. I was thinking I was going to use the charge ability to show it off, you know, with, with, uh, with Rusty, but eh. Oh yeah, and then if you throw a dark matter, that will deal a guaranteed uh, 9,999, and I don't know how he's countering these attacks here. When I got my commands off before he even got his fucking turn off. But whatever. Yeah, I'm using Aura right here to get Auto Life back on Amaranth. That way if he gets KO'd, you know, he comes back. The Dragon's Crest does a guaranteed uh, 9,999, and then... Rusty, uh, his shock will do guaranteed quadruple nines, however, if he's in mini status, uh, that will actually get reduced. Now, about this point in the fight, Ozma, yeah, he's going to start countering with Berserk. He either counters with Berserk on one of your characters, or Kiriga. Kiriga, I think, is actually worse because it just delays the battle. But actually, no, I, I, no... Maybe Kiraga isn't worse. I think Berserk's actually worse because you have to waste somebody else's turn to get that character un -Berserk. But, um, yeah, I don't, I don't like Berserk in this case. It's actually bad for me because I don't have my character set up to do, like, really good damage. And yeah, here's that, f and then he follows that up with Mini. That was a bitch move right there because now Rusty is going to do shit damage with his automatic physical attack he's about to do. 
But yeah, this uh, this boss has a bunch of variety of different attacks, level 4 holy. Uh, my characters are not on levels divisible by 4, so I don't have to worry about level 4 holy. He won't even use it. He can use holy. I mean, he's got an ability called curse. I mean, I did show it off earlier. And yeah, I got lucky he didn't use it uh, in this battle. If he doesn't use it, then you always have a chance to win. But if he does use it, you're probably going to lose. That's easily his worst ability, is Curse, because it not only does it deal damage, but it just rapes your fucking party with status ailments. It's not even fair. I mean, there's status ailments that he, he puts on you that you can't even defend with uh, with those passive abilities. So yeah, it's cheap, and yeah, he used Death there. That was actually that was actually very nice, because I just put Aura on, um, on Amaranth there, and... Uh, yeah, we're about to do Dragon's Crest. I think, I think this is the part that I think this is the one that kills him because yeah, he wasted an attack that was only single targeting. It didn't do anything, and I think that's the last one right there. Yep. And there he goes. That's the ultimate super boss in the game. Goodbye and good fucking riddance. This guy is a bitch. But yeah, return magic when he does Doomsday. That, in my opinion, is the best way to take this guy out. Largely, this battle is just based on luck. So, if you have characters with abilities like uh, Frog Drop, Thievery, Freya's Dragon Crest, and if you're if you get lucky with Rusty not being mini, you could also use Shock. And yeah, you get a ton of experience and ability points, and a Pumice, which will actually teach the Arch Summon to Garnet. That's her final summon. And we also got a Dark Matter, too. I don't know why we got one of those. I didn't think we were supposed to get one of those. Maybe because I threw one at Ozma, I got one back. I don't know. Record how I feel right now, and he's going to give us a card? Fuck you and your cards, man. I don't want cards, and we get a strategy guide. I don't even know what that does. I forgot. I mean, I've only beaten this guy once before. This is my second time beating Ozma. But, yeah, that boss is a bitch. That's the ultimate super boss. Whew. Thank God. All I gotta say is thank God that shit is over with. I hate that boss. But anyways, uh, yeah, I got the pumice piece, or the, just the pumice, which teaches the arch summon. And uh, yeah, it's the ultimate summon in the game, which causes shadow damage to all enemies. And it's the ultimate summon unless enemies absorb shadow. If enemies absorb shadow, the summon is fucking worthless, in which case you'd rather use Bahamut. Obviously. But, uh, <clears throat> anyways, I think the rest of the episode, uh, yeah, I'm gonna have Beatrix in my party. For the hell of it. And, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be doing a little frog catching again. So, uh, which one of the marshes have I not been to? I think one over here. Or, there's one over here that I haven't been to yet. I believe there's two I haven't been to. I, I think there's four total in the entire world, but don't quote me on that. I think there may be more than that, perhaps? I don't know. But yeah, I'm gonna start the whole frog catching minigame in earnest now that, uh... Well, we can actually get an optional boss if we catch 99 frogs, so, um... And, and an item, too. For Kina, so we definitely want to do this side quest. Wow, look at all these frogs, man. And of course, if you're coming here, make sure to have Kina in your party. Sure, we'll catch frogs for a little bit. Mmm, yummy. So yeah, we're at 33 right now. Which, um, you know, we still got a ways to go to get 45, but, eh, oh well. Uh, two females and a male, and... Okay. So, I can catch two more females. And, oh, come here. Come here, damn it. Yeah, I don't want to catch that male over there. Oh, it's pretty easy to catch these frogs. 
So yeah, other than that, I'm just gonna leave this place alone for a while. And yeah, while I'm waiting for frogs to regenerate, I'll just um, I'll just fight around and goof around. I guess I don't know. I don't really know what the re the regenerate rate or how that works in this game. Maybe you can just leave your game on pause for five hours and maybe the frogs will regenerate without having to do anything at all. But, um, yeah, I don't know how that works. So, yeah, I'm gonna... I'm just gonna fast forward until, uh... until I get 45 frogs. Alright, 44 frogs, huh? And I believe there's a male and a female. Yeah, okay. So that leaves a f male and a female left in this pond. And... Oh, Master Quail. You come far along way of Gormond, I give you this. And yes, he gives us battle boots, which are pretty worthless because I already have a pair of battle boots. But I guess you could use them for synthesizing later or something. I don't know. So yeah, the next, uh, the next one's gonna be, uh, yeah, I done catching. The next, uh, crap that we're gonna get is at 99 frogs. So yeah, that could take me a while, I think. So if I don't post any episodes of this game for a couple days, uh, that's probably why. Because I'm probably gonna take a couple days to screw around and catch frogs and do other crap and plus I just need a break after that Ozma fight. <laughs> that shit fucking oh my god. The preparation for that goddamn fight is just ridiculous. So yeah I'll show off one more marsh. Then I'll end the episode. Yeah, this is the one on the mist, or not on the mist, but on the outer continent. I believe I've already shown off this marsh. Maybe once or twice already, but, eh, why not, I'll show it again. So basically, uh, I'm just going to be alternating between the swamps. As soon as the frogs run out at one swamp, go to another swamp. And when they're all depleted, then, uh... I don't know, go around and fight battles until frogs come back. Yes, Kina, your fat ass can eat frogs. Yeah, it's been a while since we've been here. And I kind of wish I would have done this a little bit more uh, before, you know, with the catching frogs once I started disc 3 side questing, but, eh, whatever. And yeah, this is a bitch trying to catch these frogs right now, man. They keep running away from me! Little jerks. But yeah, I think I want to at least catch 50 frogs and then I'm probably just gonna call it an episode, I think, huh? Come on, that one's just sitting there. How come I... It's right there! Come on, Kina! Grab the fucking thing. Yeah, it's harder to catch frogs than this one. Plus, I don't know why your fat ass can't walk any farther that way. Now my thumb is getting tired. <laughs> okay, yeah, I just turned on the analog stick. That's a little bit easier than the D-pad. Come on, man! I just want frogs! Ribbit. Oh, God. Give me froggies. <laughs> I might, you know, I might just say, fuck it. This is too hard. If, oh, come on. Oh, how the fuck did he get away? No, no, come here! Little shits. How the fuck did I miss him? I was hitting the button. 
Good God. Alright, yeah, that's good enough, man. I'm done. So that's all for this episode of Let's Play Final Fantasy IX. In the next episode, I think I'm going to show off the optional boss for the frog catching minigame. So there you go. This is Veteran0121. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.